Reject. Okay, it's working. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, I hope you had a great lunch because it was really good. Uh, so today I'll talk about ampersand JS. This is uh, basically uh, how people call non-frameworky -frame, non framework, which you'll see in a moment why. But first, uh, just a moment about me. I'm a senior client side engineer in XTEAM. XTEAM is a company made of exclusively remote workers. We don't have any office, uh, anyone uh, working in, well, let's say, in, in one specific place. And we recently opened Xlabs, which is a fund dedicated to uh, just help people grow, learn new stuff. Uh, we host uh, various, uh, various events, like meetups in the Philippines uh, uh, to, let's say, uh, teach people Drupal. Uh, we also have a fund for uh, open source projects. So if you have any idea, for example, to uh, help, because we are specifically trying to reach remote workers. So if you have any idea how to support them and make their life easier, just uh, let me know and we will make it happen. So, okay, Emerson Jazz, uh, who created it? So, basically, this team called um, uh, NDET. And they had an idea. If, I guess most of you heard about Backbone, uh, which is a JavaScript framework. But the issue was that it was just a too monolithic. It was just a one huge framework uh, that tried to solve your problems. And if you wanted to use only one part of this framework, you, you just couldn't, because it was just, just one thing. So a bunch of guys from this company tried to make the idea, came with the idea how to solve this. And they decided to split everything into really, really small pieces and give you everything to use. It's basically up to you uh, which part to use, how you use it. And it just tries to solve really very small problems and not make you uh, choose uh, any of their solutions. So basically, I uh, joined their team a few months ago, I guess two or three. Uh, but we have plenty of contributors. Uh, all of them are, we are really thankful to them. And if you want to join, just let us know. There is, it's open source project for all, so uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, I would like to split this talk in two parts. The first is a briefly overview of uh, ampersand JS itself. And then I will move to our philosophy, how we do things, and why we did this uh, in, in a specific way. So this is ampersand, uh, as you can read, high model or LC coupled non framework framework for building advanced JavaScript applications. Uh, it's uh, as a as you can uh, see from the uh, first view, it's nothing more than just models, collections, routers, views, so, and basically that's all, nothing unusual. So you may think, uh, why is it different? I will try to uh, explain, it, uh, uh, explain it in, in, in a few words. Just bear with me for a moment. I'll walk you through, through all the basics. So ampersand state. This is basic object of everything uh, in, in a framework. It's based for... Uh, every old module that you'll ever use. Uh, currently, there is an object observe in uh, ECMAScript 6 that everyone is waiting for, but it's not yet that, uh, that great. It's pretty slow, and it's not, uh, it, it's not, uh, it cannot be used in all the, all the browsers currently. So uh, what they came with is uh, that when you use different data types, you have three choices properties, which are data types uh, on a different uh, on a, uh, basic objects, which you simply describe, whether it's uh, a string, number, boolean, date, it, it's up to you. Whether it's required, what are the possible values, all this stuff. It's basically like a schema for databases, but on the, for, for the client. Uh, second is session. Session is uh, this almost the same uh, like properties, but it's um, it meant to be used for only one session uh, of user. So if you use the JSON or serialize or something like this, or you try to store this uh, model on server, it won't be passed because it's just session variable. And uh, another thing is derived derivatives, which are uh, I've never seen before, I guess. 
uh, is basically a property that's dependent on other property, and it will react to changes uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in properties it depends on. For example, here uh, we have full name derivative, which depends on first name and last name. And every time uh, either of those change, the derivative property will be uh, basically recalculated. Uh, models, and because uh, ampersand is really modular, each piece is made of something else. Like uh, only ampersand state and ampersand router are standalone modules. So here models are uh, just mix of ampersand state and ampersand sync, which give it uh, an ability to uh, store models uh, on the server, to fetch them, to save, to destroy them, and, and so on. Collections, there are few few types of collections. Uh, where in Backbone, for example, we had only one. Uh, we had few few of them. First one is uh, simple ampersand collection. It does nothing, only stores your models in a you know in one group. Uh, and only it, it also has a few few, few other things like uh, state, as I said, because. Uh, Ampersand state is based for everything, so you can uh, listen for changes of everything on everything. It's, it's just up to you. And it also contains some uh, ES5 uh, methods like uh, reduce, filter, map, and so on, because uh, Ampersand is only i9 and higher, so you can use all ES5 methods. So we are uh, really glad about this. And other than this, Ampersand collection on it does, on its own doesn't have anything. Ampersand collection is made of uh, ampersand collection, uh, sub collection, sorry, uh, ampersand collection itself. And there is a mixing, which I will talk about, uh, with underscore methods. And what you can use uh, sub collection for is that you can create, well, sub collections of, uh, of previous collection that will be automatically updated based on your, uh, on, on your uh, filters. For example, here we have a base collection. And on a sub-collection with favorite widgets, we'll see only uh, data that contains awesome true. And comparator, which is um, <laughs> just a way of sorting things. You can add filters, remove filters, uh, choose whether to. Uh, you can also, for example, say that, uh, OK, I want the only models that have awesome true, but I want to listen for uh, some other properties. And if these properties change, also update my uh, sub-collection and check whether there's uh, something new or, or maybe we should remove something. And the last one is ampersand rest collection, which is like, a huge mixing of uh, ampersand collection, ampersand rest mixing, which, is, uh, which are just methods for uh, persisting your, your data on server and uh, working with the APIs, and underscore uh, mixings, which gives you all the abilities of, uh, of underscore itself. Views. There are plenty of views. There's no only one <laughs> like people are used to. So ampersand view is a mix of ampersand state, DOM bindings, and collection view. Collection view is used here only because we wanted to let people render collections, which is really uh, like a common common task without uh, any any other additions. And DOM bindings are uh, the way that you can. Uh, tell you which data from your model should be should be used. This is uh, this could be compared to uh, Angular bindings uh, to a data binding, but uh, I will explain why not. Basically, because it's it's not two-way binding, but <laughs> bear with me. Uh, okay, so here is basically you give it template, which is string. It can only have one root, uh, so one root element for for template. Uh, you can use either string or function, uh, but you don't have to uh, precompile your functions, uh, your templates, or place data in it, uh, and so on. As you can see, there are data hooks which will be used for for data bindings. I will talk about uh, and you can listen, for example, for events and so on. Uh, additional thing for this view is that you can uh, you can register subviews. Which, were, uh, which was a pretty common, uh, a common thing you wanted to do in, for example, Backbone, uh, but wasn't able to. And collection view is an uh, iterative way to create single view inside the, inside the container, which is also contained in uh, ampersand view, but maybe you have a just, uh, use case to render collection only, who knows? Uh, ampersand view switcher is something like a, you can create a 
region. Uh, it's it's nomenclature from Marionette, exactly. You can create a region uh, which you can use to swap views inside. Maybe, for example, you can have a button with uh, tabs or something like this. And you can say that after I click this button, let's switch this view and place uh, new things inside. And it will automatically um, register all, uh, all your events, destroy all the elements, uh, clear your memory, and all stuff. Uh, it's made of ampersand view as a base, plus uh, it has just a few, few simple ways, a few simple uh, uh, functions. And you can specify here how to, how, uh, how to hide this view, how to show this view, and whether you want to wait for, uh, f before it's gone, the first, uh, the first view, or not. So for example, you can use this to animate uh, those views or set new title, or I don't know, maybe scroll top, as you can see. Form view, this is uh, a thing that I really, really like. It's handling forms is, uh, is hard. It's hard, basically, it's, it's really hard. And the way we try to solve this is you can create a view which contains uh, all the inputs. Uh, it's, it doesn't uh, really care what inputs you will place in there, but it will handle all the, uh, all the data, um, the data validation. It will test uh, whether you can send, uh, send it already to server. You can register callbacks and, and all this stuff. It will also uh, check whether to show uh, error messages for you, just, uh, just, uh, just like that. You don't have to just, uh, specify anything. And there are a few, uh, few inputs that you can, uh, you can choose on. There's input view, which is a simple, uh, simple input. You, you just describe uh, its label, its name, uh, validation uh, rules, and so on. Our input, uh, which is basically the same as input, but uh, it allows you to create multiple instances if you just want to get an uh, array of values from, from it. For example, as we had, uh, uh, we had an example of uh, adding shipping costs, this, uh, this is exactly uh, the same use case where you can just uh, add uh, new, new weights of, of a package, for example. Select view, which will create select for you, checkbox view, and you can place all of them inside the form view, and we'll just, they will all just play together. It's, it's up to you which one you choose. And we are now on view bindings. This is what I really like to talk about, because this thing that um, it, it's hard to get it right. DOM bindings are usually, uh, well, there, there is, a, of course, uh, there is React right now, which uh, uh, only change the, the things that, uh, the, the change itself, it doesn't really render a whole view. Uh, but let me uh, just stop for a moment, because we had this issue recently about how to uh, tell HTML that it should be bind, uh, bound in a specific place. So until now, we used uh, roles attribute on HTML elements, and someone pointed out that uh, this is kind of accessibility issue, because there are various area roles which are uh, used as a role, and if you keep to use to those roles, you will eventually use a role which is reserved for ARIA, and you will basically break uh, accessibility for your, uh, for your users. So there's a huge debate, and we came with the ideas like use uh, data JS, data bind, data hook, data action, rel attribute, name attribute, classes. It is uh, like a few, few weeks long, but in the end we came, uh, uh, we, we finished with a uh, data hook. So it's, it's, uh, it's a way how we all uh, use this uh, in HTML. And we have a few, few uh, bindings. So basically binding is, uh, you can tell which things uh, from model to use and in which place in the view itself. So text binding is, uh, using the text from the, from the model itself to be placed in a view. Class is uh, using a class in a, as an attribute. Attribute is mapping. Uh, you just uh, say which attribute you want to match with uh, which uh, value from model, and it will, uh, they, they will just update. Value uh, are for inputs. Boolean class and Boolean attributes are just interpolated value of models. So whether it will return true or false, it will uh, swap those classes or attributes. And toggle and switch are uh, basically the same, but for uh, visibility. So if your, for example, model that visible uh, is true, they will be uh, visible. If not, they will just be hidden. And in HTML, is placing HTML itself uh, inside. Uh, 
inside the element. Uh, the thing that I forgot to uh, forget to tell about is that in the models in an in state, because uh, thanks to registering all all the data types, because if we specify data type, we as I said we create schema of some kind, some kind of, and we are able to lock the schema uh, by passing uh, allow uh, uh, allow uh, values other values flag. And thanks to this, we are able to listen. We are able to, let's say, mimic object observe because we can use uh, object defined property, which is from X ES5 node ES6, and we can use either model dot age, for example, to set this age, or model dot set uh, as a function. And no matter which uh, way we will choose, it will always uh, trigger uh, change value. Because it will be registering our properties, uh, not uh, writing them um, in inside an object itself. And the router, it's a all same router. It will just register your your uh, routes and trigger functions according to, to the route you are currently now. It will handle back button, history. You can navigate. You can redirect your uh, your users and so on. And this is the fun part. I, I like the most are the mixings. So, because the uh, ampersand is so modular, you can uh, we have ampersand class extend, which is um, which is module for creating other modules. Let's let's call it this way. This is basically uh, an exported function that lets you chain uh, sub, uh, prototypes of of your subclasses, and thanks to it, you can create one small functionality that will mix into other things. For example, uh, let's say you have um, Model which you really like, but you are not using REST API, uh, but real type communication. So instead of using a model which is made of ampersand state and ampersand sync, you can use ampersand state and create your own, for example, ampersand real time uh, sync, something like this. And you can mix them, and you will get the same thing uh, as ampersand model, but with uh, real time communication. And you don't have to uh, polite, uh, uh, oh, sorry, pollute uh, ampersand. Uh, Ampersand model, and you can use it uh, in, a, in the same way as you did before, uh, because basically you didn't modify the, the old version. And uh, current mixings are collection rest mixings, as I said before. It contains all the uh, uh, persisting uh, functions, underscore mixing with all the, uh, and the functionality of underscore uh, don't think, uh, which is created by Philip. It led to uh, just bind manually, uh, automatically, sorry, uh, all the all the data. Not not by using data hooks and so on, but uh, old double brackets, and it will uh, just render render the view on its own. And the Flip also recently started to work on ampersand React mixing, which you can also also create. It's, it's just up to you. You can use uh, you know ampersand flux mixing or, or something like this. It's it's just up to you because. You can create anything from this. And last but not least, ampersand CLI. It's an additional thing that should help you create uh, ampersand apps. If you ever use Yoman, you should probably be familiar with, uh, with the concept. It lets you start a new application. Uh, you can just uh, say name of the application, which API you want to use, because uh, we currently support uh, Happy and, uh, and Express. Apps, it will create structure for you and so on. All the configurations, uh, you have few configurations file which uh, you can basically configure a whole your application in five minutes. You can generate form views and models. You, know, you just type uh, ampersand uh, gen form and you get your, for example, input view or something like this. You can generate models from JSON. Uh, if you have uh, already pre-created API and it's pretty less than pretty big. Uh, you don't want to manually create all those models. You can basically just uh, send a request, get all the JSON from the server, and just paste it in your terminal. Just just pipe it to uh, to ampersand generator, and it will create model model from from this API. And it will of course handle all the data types. It will detect whether it's a number or a boolean uh, or array and so on. And it can can inform from models. If you, for example, generate model, uh, let's say you have an API with create user. 
And in a response from create user, you get uh, all the same values as a confirmation. You can get this response, create, uh, create models using this uh, generator, and then use the same model to create form for creating your user, for example. So it's the two easy steps, and you have uh, already created form. And you can configure the code. When you create your application, you will get ampersand RC which you, where you can specify all the default templates, all the uh, paths if you want to, for example, change, uh, change something, and so on. So this was about Ampersand, and now uh, why we created this, and uh, what's our philosophy. Uh, Stefan talk, uh, Stefan's talk uh, fits here really good, because uh, he said that we should scratch our own itch, and I totally, um, I, I'm I, uh, just, I agree. In, in total, uh, because as I said, to build great products, you want to use them yourself first. So what we wanted to do is, uh, because there are always different projects with the different requirements. So what you want to uh, have is just base for, your, for let's say, uh, base, uh, base stuff, base code base that you want to use. And you want the, only those small, those small parts, those small blocks. It's like a Unix philosophy it say, it says that you should do only one thing and one thing well. Uh, this is exactly the same. Uh, if you want to use some other block for the same, uh, for the same task, you can do this. It's up to you. Uh, and Henrik, uh, who I guess was uh, the first creator of Ampersand, the, the first person to start this, said yesterday, optimize for change. It's the only constant. And I wouldn't say it better. Because uh, he's basically right. He's just right. Uh, nothing, is, uh, nothing, nothing is constant uh, other than, than change, because everything will change sooner or later. And it's not about solving a problem. It's how we approach it. Uh, if you solve a problem once, you're more than sure that you will have let's say, slightly different, but in the end, the same problems in, in your life. Uh, uh, as you go on, so you have to think about the, you have to think about the, how you uh, solve this problem, uh, how you approach those problems, not how you solve them, because every solution will be probably different. You have to know the way of, of solving those, and it's easier to learn only things you need to know. If you get one huge framework. Uh, like learning curve for big framework is like you are here, you know nothing, and to go to the top it's like you know, straight straight to the top. You know you have to know everything to, to even start with basic uh, application. Where if you come to the project and you're asked to uh, fix small bug or something like this, and you know where this bug is, but uh, you know how it how it works with all the parts. If we use Ampersand, you don't have to know these parts because this one module which uh, is responsible for this, and if you know its API, which is probably really, really small, you can fix this problem. You can change it, you can modify it. It's, it's, uh, it's not that hard. And now, everything is separate common JS module. Uh, we use Browserify for everything. You can use Webpack if you want, it, it's up to you. But we keep to the same, uh, same, way of, uh, same, same way of doing things for every module. And this way we are constant and we don't have any surprises if everything changes. It's easy to re reuse our code. We can export, require all the things. Uh, everything is hosted on NPM. It allows us to uh, create applications really quick. It's like rapid prototyping, if, if someone would say this way. Everything should be fully tested, and we are still working on it. There are a few, few pieces that, that are not uh, fully tested yet, but we will get there. And now, every, every small module in Ampersand has its own GitHub repository, everything. And what this uh, lets you do is, uh, we also had this, uh, this, um, this issue, well, not issue, this case. Uh, someone came and he wanted to modify one of our small modules. And everything he had to do was uh, just fork it, change it, uh, change uh, our URLs in package JSON. That's, that's all. And if you, for example, uh, if you change a model and something was dependent on it, there there is uh, no problem because you basically can link them in package JSON and they will up upgrade like uh, like this, like uh, you know nothing happened. Uh, everything has separate issues. So let's say you have a huge team and you have. 30, 40, maybe modules. You can believe me that it's hard to maintain them all. 
So uh, what's a good idea is to separate those modules between, uh, let's say, pairs of people who can maintain those. And thanks to, to a separation of the, uh, of the uh, issues, you can, um, let's say, you can keep saying, because if you see 200 issues, it's not the, the, the best view. But if, you're, if you have them separated, it's much, much easier to handle them. And everything has a separate life. Uh, if you have something that's really huge, really monolithic, it's hard to change things there. It's like working with legacy code. You change one thing and everything can break, like, like this. You never know uh, why. And if you use those small modules, you can basically uh, bump version every patch. You can just patch, patch version, publish it to NPM, and every, everyone is happy because they instantly get, uh, get, get the feedback. They instantly get the, the newer and better version uh, of, of this. And if you, uh, if you would like to do this uh, in, in the same way with a, with a huge, huge framework, I guess you would run out of uh, version numbers if you keep to semantic uh, versioning <laughs> sooner or later. And as I said, everything do one thing and do it well. And I guess that everyone should uh, keep to those words because uh, we can see more and more uh, libraries and frameworks that are so huge and so difficult to, to grasp that um, it's just too hard to, for new developers to come to your project or even to a JavaScript word because it's just overwhelming. When they see so much tools, so much framework, so much libraries, they just don't know where to put their hands in. You know? <laughs> and last, leverage existing solutions and don't reinvent the wheel. We have things like Bower, NPM, uh, CommonJS, Require. If you have uh, if you have uh, some kind of problem, probably any kind of problem, there is huge chance that already someone uh, solved this problem and it's available on NPM. And because we are using Browserify and CommonJS, you can just grab the solution, place it in your code, and it will work, just like this. And because of this, we created this uh, page called Tools Ampersand JS, which is a page with uh, already chosen by, uh, by us solutions for, for uh, common problems. If you have something, there's, uh, of course, uh, suggest, suggest a module link. Uh, you can just let us know and we will place this uh, on, in the syntax. And that's all I had to say. Uh, we are always grateful for all the contributions. If you want to use ampersand, just go to ampersandjs.com. Uh, if you want to be a part of a team, just let us know. There is huge room for improvements. And we have plenty of space for new team members. You are more than welcome. Thank you. Reject. <laughs>